keeping our coastlines clean, combating marine debris in Northern Australia. Northern Australia is lucky to have some of the most beautiful, unspoiled beaches in the world. But this is changing. These beaches are now the final resting place for tons of debris, which has been dumped mostly from fishing vessels operating in the Arafura and Timor Seas. Well, this one comes from Australia, me. Eh? All the numbers are there. I think it's foreign. Foreign, foreign. Yeah, think, oh, yeah. yeah. Taiwanese, maybe. Dumped items include plastic crates, glass bottles, aluminium cans, plastic bags, fuel drums, and massive quantities of discarded commercial fishing net. This discarded waste is called marine debris. Marine debris has consequences way beyond the visual impact. Items such as fishing net and fishing line can entangle marine turtles. Entanglement often means turtles are unable to surface to breathe and soon drown. Or they sustain injuries that can lead to a slow and painful death. That's all right. Still alive. WWF began working on the problem of marine debris in response to concerns by Aboriginal traditional owners from northeast Arnhem Land about the number of turtles washing up in discarded fishing nets each year. In the 60s or 70s when we used to walk up on the beaches, we never used to find nets. Nets have been a very big issue to us, you know, we are mostly concerned about uh, marine wildlife being entangled in them. Marine turtles are endangered around the world and marine debris continues to be a threat to the survival of these species. They have like, all well, their flippers were cut by nets mm. and their, you know, their necks. Uh, Turtles and other marine life are known to mistake plastic bags and plastic bottles for jellyfish and other foods. Ingestion of these items can cause illness and death. Yeah, sometimes we find them alive, sometimes we find them dead. Marine debris also affects breeding and feeding areas, such as seagrass beds and coral reefs. Floating debris can also carry marine pests into Australian waters which have the potential to threaten native marine species. It's quite easy to see. All right, we'll stretch it right out for you. As well as its impact on marine life, marine debris is also a navigational hazard to fishing, shipping and recreational vessels. Propeller entanglement can cause right, costly so maintenance, unnecessary down downtime and in rough seas pose a danger to the crew. WWF has been working on the problem of marine debris in partnership with Aboriginal communities, Indigenous sea rangers who monitor the northern coastline and other partners since 2000. Marine debris surveys have been conducted at Cape Arnhem, Groot Island, Elko Island, Coburg Peninsula and near Burulula in the southern Gulf of Carpentaria to monitor the amount and type of waste coming ashore. Each year, over 10,000 items, or around four and a half tons of debris, is removed from 20 kilometers of beach. In these surveys, the same sections of beach are surveyed each year to ensure that data is comparable and that any changes in the amount and type of debris can be monitored over time. All debris items are removed from the section of beach. The debris is sorted, counted, weighed, and then disposed of at the local rubbish dump. The fishing nets are identified using WWF's net kit, a fishing net identification kit for Northern Australia. All of this information is entered into WWF's marine debris database for further analysis. The information collected from marine debris surveys with various Aboriginal groups across northern and eastern coasts of the Northern Territory forms the basis for information presented to government and industry to find solutions for marine debris in northern Australian waters. Since 1996, Dimaru Land Management, an Aboriginal organisation working on natural and cultural management issues in northeast Arnhem Land, has been performing helicopter monitoring surveys along a 40 kilometre stretch of beach at Cape Arnhem. We used the helicopter to monitor the beaches for, to places where, where we cannot get to by vehicles. In 1996, we had 51 marine turtles stranded in nets. In 2001 we were back up to 32. In 2002 
fell drastically to five turtles. WWF has assisted in the last few years by providing funding towards the cost of helicopter time. To date, more than 200 entangled turtles have been found during this monitoring program alone. More than half of these turtles have been released alive, although the numbers of turtles killed or injured due to entanglement are far greater than this. Is it possible? The WWF office in Darwin receives regular reports of entangled marine life. For instance, in December 2002, commercial fishermen came across a discarded net containing 15 to 20 dead juvenile turtles. In January 2003, a customs vessel reported a net floating at sea containing six entangled turtles. These were released alive. In June 2003, commercial fishermen spent four hours retrieving a discarded net that contained not only six dead turtles, but two dead whales as well. Beating marine debris in northern Australian waters is simply a question of improving waste disposal practices in the region. WWF is currently researching recycling opportunities and waste disposal facilities at ports in the region. We are also researching education and outreach programs for industry and commercial fishers. Marine debris is a global problem and WWF is working with communities, government and industry towards long-term realistic solutions. You can help WWF's Arafura Ecoregion program stop marine debris. You can become a WWF supporter and provide an ongoing contribution to our marine conservation programs. Organize a beach cleanup in your local area or get a copy of the net kit. For more information about how to become a supporter or become involved in the marine debris program, contact the WWF office in Darwin.